You are watching the Justin TV Invitational, cast by myself, Total Biscuit. So ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to Shoutcraft right here. I bring you Brat OK in the yellow trunks. He is playing Terran here on Icy Cup Fighting Spirit versus his opponent, Atero, in the baby blue trunks. He is playing Protoss. This is the Justin TV Invitational, as brought to you by Zowie, QPad, Split Reason, and brackets kindly provided by Zeke.com. These are the loser bracket finals. One of these guys will go through to the final to face Sokke. Another will go home. Although he will go home with some money because he got this far. So $100 guaranteed for the loser of this series. And of course, way, way more on the way for the guys who win. Now... Fighting Spirit is an interesting map. We've seen some great upsets here so far, so hopefully we'll see yet more of those. I don't know. I mean, Brat OK has been so damn strong this entire tournament. And all I've really seen of Atero, I mean, I don't want to deride the guy. I mean, he got into the winner's bracket, into the semis, so he's got to be pretty amazing. But whatever the case, in his PvP, he pretty much was a one-trick pony. And I don't know if he's going to be able to face up to the wrath of Brad OK, who is a multi-talented, multi-tiered player that attacks from all possible angles. He's very aggressive, but he's also very patient. It is channeled aggression, folks. It is... He restrains his aggression until the exact moment that he needs to unleash it on his opponent, and generally nobody can stand in his way. He is dangerous that way. As far as I'm aware, Brad OK actually lost to Sokke in the rounds leading up to this, which is why he's in the loser's bracket to begin with. So it will be very interesting to see a Brad OK and Sokke final. It's either going to be a Brad OK and Sokke final or an Atero and Sokke final. Obviously, Atero we saw go up against Sokke earlier with some interesting results. Atero lost that one three games to two as Sokke pulled some innovative defense out and indeed some <laughs> dramatic moments going on in that particular match. Big fan of that one. We'll see if Brad OK can hold his own against Atero. So Brad OK has had a fair amount of time to hopefully study his opponent. No doubt he was watching the stream, keeping an eye on what's been going on here with Atero's playstyle. Of course, Atero's PvP playstyle is nothing like his PvT, so that is something he needs to bear in mind. Brad OK opens up with a barracks and a tech lab. Now, we have sometimes, every now and again, seen Brad OK open with a Reaper. It is a possibility, certainly, although bear in mind that could be very easily shut down by the deployment of a Stalker. Stalker will not be on the field as of yet, though. Cybernetic score is not complete. Reaper already on its way, so good timing there. Brad OK is a big fan of that one. That may be scouted, however, although Atero may suspect an early Marauder push instead, but you never, never know. Brad OK not able to deal with that probe as it comes in. Atero being a right pen in the ass right there and uh, needs to deal with it quickly. If he scouts the Reaper, of course, he'll be ready to defend against it. Reaper will give him some valuable scouting information as well as some uh, wonderful damage, as certainly he would hope at any rate. Let's find out and see if that happens. Drives him away just before the Reaper comes out. We'll find out whether or not he thinks that... Ooh, there you go. Straight into his quick expansion right there, which... This Reaper opening into fast expansion is something that I've seen from Brad OK before. As to whether or not it's going to work in PvT, I'm not entirely sure. Because the 4 gateway is on the way for a terror. Here's the thing. If Brad OK can actually hold the line with this Reaper right here, it could very easily snipe off the probe before it's even able to deploy anything. Now being intercepted right here by a terror. But of course, a terror won't be able to do anything. Brad OK with... Bizarre micromanagement there, or lack thereof. I have to wonder if that was lag. Whatever the case, taking two hits from that Zealot for no apparent reason at all. Really not actually sure why he did that. He could have very easily killed the Zealot entirely with the use of that Reaper. There we go, that's down, but the Stalker's now up on the field, which means that one will go down after another shot, and there you go. Reaper dealt with very easily. Brad OK keeping an eye out for four gates. The problem is it could be bloody anywhere. And there we go. That is where the four gateway is coming from. Will the Terran player be able to hold it? He can perhaps with a bunker and that's what he's doing right now. Going straight through into several barracks. It looks like he might be able to hold this off. We'll find out. In a PVT it's way less of a sure thing than it is in a PVP. So just bear that one in mind. Two stalkers on the field. Four marines right here. Bunker will be finished by the time he decides to go in there. Cracking that bunker is going to be extremely difficult. He's going to need some Marauders on the field, which is what he's got coming up right here. And with the Stimpak, that's... I don't know. I mean, with the Stimpak, I think he's got a good chance of repulsing this Forget. This is really all Atero seems to do. And I've not actually seen him do anything else other than use the Four Gateway approach. So, again, it would use what works. But I don't think that's going to work so well against Brad OK, but you never know. If he's able to deploy a pylon right there, this could be fairly devastating. The thing is, the uh, Terran will do a way better job of holding the line than the Protoss will. 
That's an interesting approach right there. Brad okay with an early missile turret for no apparent reason. Perhaps it's suspecting a void ray, but there you go. No void rays right here. Here comes the four gateway. And we do have the bunker holding up right. He's going to need to repair this though, because that bunker's going to go down very quickly. No repairs on the bunker. That's not good at all. Adara should be able to drive his way through there. Will he be able to hold that line? The Marauders are doing a good job of doing so. Here's the stim right there, and in comes the damage. Jotaro being forced back gradually. However, Brad OK forcing his way all the way. Everything coming off the line right now for Brad OK. He needs to keep deploying that. The problem is he's going to have very little money. He does have the mules continuing to pull in right there, though. He can get a bunker right there. A block up with the supply depot instead. It's unfortunate that he wasn't able to repair that bunker. He could have held it up a little bit longer. Of course, no marauder in the bunker. So not a huge amount of damage being done right there. But look at that. Brad OK has actually snuck something in there. You never know what might come in. Here comes the next attack, folks. Will he be prepared to deal with it? He's got good numbers right now. Unfortunately, he will be worn down quite unpleasantly by the stim pack that he keeps using. There's the break. In come the zealots. And there's the stim as well. No concussion available. And it's mostly marines on the field right now, which will be taken out very easily by those stalkers. In comes the flood. So much coming off the line. Brad OK pulls everything he's got to try and force them back. But they will die horribly by the looks of it. Ten stalkers on the field versus three marines and a bunch of SCVs. I do not fancy Brad OK's chances there at all, I'm afraid. Drills him in there once again with the best defense he can muster. GG, ladies and gentlemen. The four gateway takes the first game in this best of five series.